Hello everyone, welcome to my living room. <laughs> Weird start of the video, but I'm here because UK is currently going through a heat wave and I have been sleeping in the living room for the past two, three days because it is like two degrees cooler than my room, but it already makes a huge difference because the whole house is literally an oven and I'm filming this in a long sleeve t-shirt. I don't know, make it make sense. It is way too warm in my house right now. I'm not okay. Today's video is gonna be about how to get back on track if you're feeling stressed, overwhelmed, if you feel like your life is not together, if you feel like you're not reaching your fullest potential. It's kind of just to figure out where am I going wrong? What can I do to fix this? And actually start with an action plan instead of just like think about these things but then not do anything about them. So to make it a little bit more visual, I also made a Notion template for it, but you don't need the Notion template. You can just use it as inspiration. But if you do wanna get the Notion template, it will be in the description down below. Also to preface this, I. I filled out this template fully for myself about a week ago but has a lot of like little personal things that I don't want to share so I just did like a little example of some things that you can write down this is not the full extent of what everything you can write down but it's just an example so you can see how everything works here's what our overall page looks like it's called life reset so to give a brief overview we have six pages which is start here trigger list tasks goals months and habits and then here we have upcoming habits brain dump tasks by priority goals a to-do list and also a calendar so in this page you're gonna see kind of like a step-by-step -step guide of like what to do when you kind of feel like you need a life reset the first section is called time to reflect and it is full of small little questions to kind of get you to start thinking what is wrong what is stressing me out this is not meant to create a to-do list straight off the bat this is literally just like on the top of your head answer this question what are you feeling so let me quickly go through the questions and show you my answers as examples so first question we have is what have I been putting off for months so many Skillshare classes that I've been meaning to work on learning how to trade and prioritizing my hobbies what are my priorities youtube health and instagram on youtube i need to create a more consistent schedule because i'm very inconsistent also i want to start going out of my comfort zone and starting to work with people blah 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 what stresses me out being behind creating detailed plans not following through and then having to recreate them and deadlines already seeing a very big theme there it basically means that the main thing that stresses me out is not being consistent what are some aspects of my life that i feel need the most work right now i would say mindset money management and financial knowledge and also consistency once again we're seeing this consistency thing come up a lot what's something that i know makes me happy that i've been avoiding dance <laughs> the way i wrote that down i'm like dance is in my blood like i'm just so happy when i dance like no i just like that was the only thing i could think of that like i really like every single time i finish a dance class i feel so happy but then a week goes by and then i'm scared to go again like it just is such a repeated cycle but what makes me feel burnt out and how can i prevent it for me having to batch film because I'm behind on my own goals and the way I can prevent it is by creating a rough schedule and staying on top of it. What activities allow me to actually rest? Reading, talking to family, playing sims. What are the aspects of my life where I feel the most lost in right now? Career and financial knowledge. Initially I wrote career with quotation marks because that's why I'm lost because I don't want a traditional career but I'm like trying to figure that out anyway financial knowledge I meant kind of like I don't know how to like invest properly and like trade and I really want to learn how to do that what are some bad habits that make me feel bad about myself how can I work on them horrible sleeping schedule oh my god so bad I went to sleep at four yesterday and always having to listen to something in the background so like I'm constantly listening to music in the background and I don't think that's a great thing it means that I'm not comfortable being with myself in silence which is not a good thing to have what are some habits I should incorporate into my daily life that I know improve my mood and productivity Wim Hof breathing, cold showers and stretching, that's basically all within the Wim Hof method. What do I mostly procrastinate by doing and is there a way to prevent doing this? For me, watching Instagram stories I think I need to just mute more people because I don't know how else to prevent doing that. And also organizing things, I need to stop organizing and start doing. I have a tendency to plan stuff and then it's such a detailed plan and so like over the top that I don't follow through and then have to replan it and then basically I just keep planning and it's like false productivity because I feel like I'm doing something but in the end I'm not really doing anything because I'm just you know anyway those questions when I initially wrote them out they allowed me to see that my main main thing that's really bringing me down recently is consistency so for you this could be something like you're not looking after yourself or you're not prioritizing your relationships or you're not prioritizing your health or like something along the line like it's very different for each person but so our next section is like the first section because that was just like a reflection moment in this first section we're gonna start off with a complete brain dump so you're gonna write down literally 
everything that's on your mind, your tasks, your events, your goals, habits, anything that you're like, oh my God, I need to get this done, I cannot forget it, or goals that you've been meaning to achieve for a while, or habits that you mean to pick up, or like you need to stop doing, anything. I'm gonna mention this later in the video, but your brain is not designed to remember these things. Like we're only supposed to remember a certain amount of things, and if you're trying to remember all these dates, all these tasks, all these goals, you're gonna get overwhelmed. The feeling of overwhelm is in your head because you're literally keeping too many things in your head. So as you can see, my list is not organized at all. It can be messy as you want. And also at the end of this whole process, come back to this list and make sure that everything on this list has been like put into a certain section. So either like the task section or the calendar section or the goals or the habits. Our next section is kind of moving on from the brain dump. So any dates you have in this brain dump, you're gonna write them down into our months database. So what I wrote is our brains are not designed to remember these things. You'll feel a lot calmer if you don't have to keep track of everything in your mind. That is literally what I said like two minutes ago, but it's true. Your brain is not meant to remember so many dates. Like you're just gonna feel stressed. So open up the page of each month and write down any upcoming trips, birthdays, events, deadlines, absolutely anything. If you have to remember a lot of dates, this is the place to write them down. So this is our little months database. So you're gonna see every single month here. And if you open up each month, you can actually write down an event that you have in that month. So it is a very simple layout to just keep track of the dates. Also a little tip, if you're gonna be writing stuff in here, this is a call out, which means that if you write something and then press enter, it's actually gonna push you out of the call out. So if you wanna type within the call out, you need to hold shift and then press enter. And then you can write as much as you want. And also just to quickly show you, if you go into your main page you're gonna see the upcoming events here and there's basically a filter in place here to see which months you want to see so for example let's say july just finished i can just go ahead and take out july and we're only gonna see the months upcoming and also i have added in the years for our next section we're gonna be writing out some goals that you've been either putting off or that you are currently working on so you're gonna go into the goals database and you're gonna see our little goals here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the templates and create new goal and then write in your goal on the bottom here you will see a little table and this table is basically a table of tasks that you need to do in order to get closer to that goal so let me show you an example so for example reach 300,000 subscribers that's not fully dependent on you it's a little bit vague but the way this works is if we scroll down below we see a little task list of things that we want to do to get closer to that goal so this is actually connected to the tasks database and it's going to automatically connect that task to that goal so you can see here in this table that here's the goal and here are the tasks that are connected to it. And if you go into the tasks database, you will actually see all of your overall tasks. So it depends on what you're trying to see. And basically, if you create a new goal, if you press the new goal template, the table is already going to be automatically worked out. There's going to be a filter already in place for this specific goal, tasks for this specific goal, I mean. And if you write down a goal, make sure to write down at least like two or three tasks to get closer to that goal. Don't just write down a goal and not write down down any tasks because that goal is just going to be sitting there in that list you need to think of actionable things that you can do to get closer to it because then it doesn't seem so overwhelming because you've broken it down so our next section is writing out your incompletion trigger list to explain kind of what it is it's basically writing out a list of like all the little aspects of your life to kind of trigger your memory and to remind you like oh did i have to do anything for this this is a very simple incompletion trigger list you honestly should go as detailed as you can obviously maybe not too too detailed but basically just writing out like every little section of your life so these are some things that i actually have in my trigger list and then some of them are examples so for example if you have different modules in university like different things to do with fitness different hobbies you're doing routines literally anything like any aspect of your life that you have that you might need to be reminded on for a task write it down so for example if i'm ever feeling overwhelmed and i don't really understand why i can go to my incompletion trigger list and see like okay what are the aspects of my life what are the tasks i need to think about so i can be like okay do i have to do anything in module one and then think about it and be like okay i had to do this lecture i had to do this homework i had to do this 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 did i have to do everything for website maintenance oh yes i forgot i had to change this page if you feel like you need more examples of what you can write down just look up incompletion trigger list on google there's honestly so many examples mine was a very basic one but you can honestly make it as big as possible and in the beginning it seems like it might overwhelm you but honestly truly it just shows you like 
okay, I'm not forgetting any aspect of my life. I'm not isolating anything. I'm not like only focusing on one little area. You're making sure that everything is kind of covered. So underneath this trigger list, you'll see a little brain dump again where you can write down some things. Like maybe I remember something. Oh yeah, I forgot. I have to like change this thing on my website. Let me write it down. So it's very, very comfortable there. So in our next section, we're gonna identify our priority matrix variables. Big words, but it's a lot simpler than what it sounds like. So this is more or less what a priority matrix looks like. It's, I think it's called like the Eisen something. I forgot the name. I'll put it here though. But this is a very simple one. It's kind of based on like how urgent something is, the importance of it. And there's kind of like four sections of like, do this first, do the second, do this third, and like get rid of this task or whatever. So what I did in this Notion template is I took it a little bit further and I did kind of like a five by five matrix table thing. And there are four formulas in our tasks database that work out the order of how you should complete your tasks. So to start, you're going to want to decide the names of variable one and variable two. So for example, let me show you this table once again, the simple one so we don't get overwhelmed. So you're going to have a variable on the y axis and also a variable on the x axis. And you have the power to decide what you want that variable to be. So some examples are value, effort, importance, duration, and urgency. There are also some examples are like if you are trying to figure out what is most important to you as a business, you could put cost even. I feel like honestly, for most people, the two most common variables that are going to be chosen are importance and urgency. That is personally what I chose myself. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the tasks table and change the name of variable one and variable two. So once you do that, you're going to see that we have five options for each one. We have very low, low, medium, high, very high. So for example, if it has a very low importance, if it has a very high importance, if it has a high urgency, medium urgency, you have choice for that task. And having five options really breaks it down. I feel like if you just go like high and low, it's a little bit too vague. So basically how this works is in this table, we have three formulas to work out the best order of how you should complete your tasks. So for example, here we have four tasks that I told myself I'm going to do on the 22nd of July. With these four tasks, I might be feeling overwhelmed and confused, like what should I do first, that kind of thing. So as you can see, a task that has low importance and low urgency is going to be towards the bottom and a task that has very high importance and medium urgency is going to be towards the top. So these tasks that do not have a date set to them yet, this is kind of just to get a general idea of what you should schedule in next kind of, but I would still always recommend to do like a due date. So for example, if I change this to very low, you're going to see it's going to move automatically. If I change this to very high and change this to medium, it's going to move up. So it honestly just depends. There's like a lot of different variations that it can be. And based on what specific variation it is, it's going to move down. So for example, if I change this to medium or low, it's not going to change because it's still perfectly in between that. And our last section is writing out the habits that you want to achieve. So you're going to go into the habits database and you're just going to change the name of the habits to an emoji if possible, because it looks a lot cleaner. So basically here, it's a very, very, very simple habit table. You have the date, you have the day. This is just because every single database needs to have a name property. And then you have our habits here and you associate them with emojis. So for example, for me, it's breathing practice, cold showers and stretching. There's no stretching emoji, which is quite frustrating. <laughs> and the reason I'm saying it's better to do an emoji is because in our main page, you can see the habits and it's a lot cleaner if it's just an emoji it's a lot easier to see and honestly I would not recommend to have like over five habits or like four habits that you're trying to do at the same time also I want to explain how this works in the main page so in the main page you're only going to see one day and the reason for that is every single day when you go on this page you're just going to click new and automatically it's going to assign itself to this day so you can see it says July 20th and you can just write in like today is a Wednesday and I've completed this and I've completed this and when the next day starts this is going to disappear once again. And that's because you don't want to see this huge table of everything you've done. Like if you want to see that, you can just go into the habits page and see an overview. But if you just want to see your habits for today specifically, you're just going to click new and it's going to automatically add a day for that specific day. So if you add a bunch of days here, it's not going to add for the next day. Like all of them, if you can see here, all of them are associated with July 20th. So now that we have more or less filled everything in, you're going to go ahead into this little section called organize your tasks. Basically, this 
is your task list broken down into three sections to organize them by. So you're gonna have this really long list of like a hundred tasks that you wanna do, but you just don't even know how to start organizing them. Like you just don't, like it's overwhelming as well. So here are three different sections that you can organize your tasks by. So if you go into the priority section, you're gonna see all of the tasks that you have that do not have any of the priorities set. So as you could see earlier, we have a lot more tasks. We have maybe like 15 tasks in our database, but you're only seeing three because these are the specific three tasks that you can see right here that do not have any priorities. Also, for example, you see these few tasks don't have any due dates or due dates. So they will also come up here in the dates section. So you can see that these tasks don't have any due date or due date. <laughs> so these are tasks that are not associated to any goal. So for example, you can go into this section and see that, oh, I have a lot of things related to like, I don't know, a Skillshare class. And then you can create a new goal and say, okay, I have a goal of posting this many Skillshare classes. So this is basically just to see your tasks that are not assigned to a few properties. And it's okay, they don't need to be assigned to a lot of properties. Like if a task doesn't have any goal related to it, that is completely fine. There's no need for it to be related to a goal. But if you just want to see your tasks broken down into a few little sections and not get overwhelmed this is the place to see it so let me do a brief overview of the main page once again so you're going to see the upcoming events that you have your habit tracker this brain dump is specifically only seeing things that don't have any property assigned to it if i open it up you're going to see it's completely empty i have not assigned anything to it and this is just kind of a reminder like oh this is a task that you need to fit in somewhere you need to either set like a date or prioritize it or do something but it can't just stand here with no context like it's just on its own if we scroll down we're gonna see tasks by priority specifically so this is ignoring the sorting that we had earlier with the due dates it's literally just to see your priorities and just to reorganize your upcoming tasks so for example i'm gonna add some stuff here you're gonna see it move around on the right here you're gonna see a brief summary of your goals and down below here we have a little checklist and also a calendar with the things that you're planning to do so for example if i'm planning to do this on this day and this day so on the left here this to-do list is subgrouped into tasks by goals so here are the tasks that we have that are not related to goals and if you complete it it will automatically move out of that place because here you're only seeing the tasks that are not completed also if you want to see your completed tasks you can go into this completed section and this is just a way to see it based on the goals you can go ahead and close these goals if it's overwhelming you you just want to specifically see the goals not related to any task or you want to see like okay what do i have to do this week to just work on this goal this is just kind of a cleaner way to see it and also a calendar here to visualize of when you can complete that task so i think that is it i honestly really really like this template so what i think i'm personally gonna do is i'm gonna keep like an empty template on my page somewhere and every few months if i feel like i need a little bit of a life reset if i feel like i'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed i'm just gonna duplicate this page and do this whole life reset from the beginning and yeah i really honestly like this page if you want this template there will be like links in my description hope you guys enjoy this video i love you all and wish you luck you guys will figure it out we can all do it i'm so hot right now <laughs> it's like 39 degrees for the uk that's insane a lot of people dm'd me and they're like oh that's the temperature every day in my country but i was like the uk is not meant for this we don't i don't even have air conditioning in my house anyway moving on i love you bye